it's great to be here. I, um, you know, I tried to hide my age for a while, um, for quite a while, because you know there is uh, ageism and sexism in this field. I know that probably shocks people, but it's true. Uh, but I will admit that um, when I took the subway here from home, just a couple of stops from home, I. Uh, the subway fare for me was a dollar thirty-five, which was uh, about half of what it is normally, and uh, and I think you can figure out the reason for that. It also became a little bit hard to deny my age when um, when the fiftieth anniversary of Watergate, uh, the Watergate break-in, came about, and you know I started writing about it. I actually even was asked to uh, moderate a panel at the Library of Congress. Um, and, you know, it was a little hard, and I always make the case that it was the Watergate scandal and the reporting by the Washington Post that drew me into journalism, and it became, became a little hard to make the case that I was so influenced as a three to four year old. <laughs> I, I had to sort of, I had to sort of fess up. But I want to start off by just saying how glad I am to be here and how honored I am to be here, and to say that my ties to St. Bonaventure do go back quite a ways and, and are very. Uh, when I was a child growing up in Lackawanna, New York, I, I listened to the radio to, uh, for some reason, I got very interested in Little Three Basketball. So Little Three Basketball, and I, I, I think this is correct, I've run it by uh, Bob Curran Jr., and he tells me this is right, that Little Three, as I recall, it was Niagara University. St. Bonaventure and Canisius College. And they, you know, that the, was sort of like a little little league unto itself in a way. But I was very, very, very interested in that for some strange reason. I'm not sure why. Um, then at the Buffalo News, where I had a long career, your former uh, dean, Lee Coppola, um, made my day once when I was a reporter by sending me a typewritten and typewritten note admiring a story of mine. And that was, uh, that was a great moment, which I recall. And of course, some of the great reporters at the Buffalo News, from Dan Herbeck to Bob McCarthy, um, of course, Charlie Specht, I hired and was happy to. Also very proud to have hired Amy Moritz, who is here today as a sports reporter, and, um, and worked closely with Joe Rowland, um, and got to know his wife, Monica, both Bonaventure graduates, so there, I'm probably missing some others, but those are people I wanted to mention. And um, so I'm a Narden graduate, Narden Academy in Buffalo, and uh, I have my Narden green on. Uh, when I was I, last weekend, I was in Buffalo attending the Athletic Hall of Fame induction at Narden, and I, I actually didn't realize it, but President uh, Narden President Sandra Betters, who's here, is a Bonaventure grad. Uh, Jandoli grad, yes? No, Bonham, but not Jandoli. Okay. Um, and distinguished alum uh, is also, Sally Venner is also here. So um, it's, it's great to be among friends, and uh, I hope I won't make any enemies with what I'm about to say. Um, when I was writing my book, uh, Newsroom Confidential, which debuts in about eight days, um, I saw a tweet from the Pulitzer Prize winning book critic, then at, the, then at the Washington Post, now at the New York Times, Carlos Lozada. And Carlos is very funny and a wonderful guy. And his tweet said something like, if I hear one more author say they're writing a memoir slash manifesto, I think I'm gonna scream. And I read this and thought, yeah, uh, there's one more, because that's exactly what I was doing. Um, the memoir part is pretty obvious. I, I write about some of the things that Dean Schindel uh, mentioned, being the first woman, this or that, and, uh, and, and getting interested in journalism and, and all of that. The manifesto part of it is, is about how important it is that our craft, our beloved craft of journalism, be at its best right now. Um, that we need journalism, and we need journalism and journalists to be at their best. So um, I think that in order to do that, we have to look at our craft a little bit differently. In the excerpt, which is really an adaptation of 
a part of my book that's going to be in the Washington Post in a few days. It'll go online, I think, on the 13th, and then be in print on the 16th. The, the, print, the print headline is, The Re-Education of a Traditional Journalist. And um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about what that means. Um, I, the two topics that I've written about the most at the Washington Post have been what's happening with threats to democracy um, because of our current politics. And secondly, what's happened to our fragile craft because of the changes in the local news business model. Um, all of these things mean that we have to be a little bit different as journalists and, and a little bit braver, I think, um, about, about what we represent. So some, some of the things that I write about and, and suggest in my piece and in my book are that we have, to, um, we have to stop defining ourselves as people who take everything down the middle in, in the name of fairness. And that we need to redefine what we do from this sort of performative neutrality to more serious truth telling. Um, and I was happy to see in the program uh, the emphasis on those two words, truth telling, because I think that is what's going to get us through this time. I do not think that we should be partisan. I don't think that we should oppose certain candidates, but I think we have to remember that we are there to serve the public, not to serve corporations, not to serve our own careers or, God forbid, our own brands, but rather to serve the public. And so we need to be willing, for example, to call a lie a lie when we see one. We need to be willing to call out racism, misogyny, and other forms of hate, and not to sort of pussyfoot around those things. We need to stand up bravely for press rights and for human rights. Um, and to think of ourselves the way the founders did, as public servants. I think that politics reporting needs to redefine itself as, as covering government, rather than as covering palace intrigue. And we need to think in terms of substance when we're covering campaigns less horse race, more substance. These are actually sea changes that need to happen in our industry, and they're very difficult to do, because even though journalists think of themselves as being of the moment, um, they actually can get pretty stuck in, this is how we've always done it. So I think that those are things that need to be taught, need to be thought about, need to be written about, and I intend to keep doing uh, doing those things, and I hope that, that those of you who are in the room, in whatever role you may have with the Jandoli School, will think hard about those things too, because I think journalism is going to serve an important role in making sure that American democracy continues. I don't think it's a slam dunk that it's going to. I'm worried, and I think we should all be worried. Um, the election denialism, the lying, um, the hesitancy to say where these threats are coming from, all of this stuff is pretty serious stuff, and I, I think we need to think hard about it and change our ways. Um, I am encouraged by the future of journalism in one way, and that is because I know a lot of young journalists. I've taught in different places, um, and for some reason I just I've just gotten to know a lot of a lot of young journalists. My former girlfriend of my son's, a former roommate of my daughter's, and lots of people whom I've either taught or worked with, and or hired. And those people, I have such incredible confidence in, and um, I think that they'll they'll find a way to make it through this morass. But we can't just assume that it's going to happen that we're going to be okay, that the industry's going to be okay, and all will be well. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a real challenge and one that we need to take on with great seriousness. And I, I believe that we will, and I urge all of you to be a part of that where you can. Um, when I wrote my last column at the Washington Post just a few weeks ago, 
um, a reader wrote to me, and uh, he was someone that I had heard from, and those of you who work in media organizations, I think especially in newspapers, will know that you know you do develop relationships with readers sometimes, and they'll write you several times or many times, and this is someone I'd heard from a lot. And he said, you know, he was sorry that I was leaving the post, but he wished me well. And he asked me a question and said, you know, you've, you've had some really interesting jobs. You've been the public editor, kind of like the internal watchdog at, at the New York Times. I had to watch over people like Dan Barry, which is very hard, you know, <laughs> just out of control. Um, and, and, you know, being at the Post during the Trump era, and, and he knew I had been at the Buffalo News, and he asked me, you know, what, what do you feel was the, the greatest honor or, of your career? And I said, I answered him right away, and I answered him very quickly, and I said, being the editor of my hometown paper where I started as a summer intern was, and being able to lead that paper was absolutely the biggest um, and most important privilege of my life. And I feel that way today. I mean, coming to the New York Times was an amazing experience. Being at the Post has been a great experience, but none of it will ever measure up to uh, running this local paper. And it's been, it's been a little bit bittersweet for me to see not only the Buffalo News, but many other newspapers shrinking in terms of their newsroom size, um, being bought up by hedge funds, having their futures um, very shaky. And at the same time, I'm so thrilled to see the amount of great journalism that's coming out of local news organizations, not just newspapers, but digital organizations, public radio stations, TV stations. And that, too, gives me um, a lot of confidence. So um, it's a time that is very worrisome in some ways. And I also feel a great sense of optimism. And just as being at the Buffalo News and being the editor there was a great honor, the chance to talk with you today and to share these thoughts is a great honor, too. And I thank you very much for it.